Also, as President Yee mentioned at the start of our meeting, the community of Gilroy was terrorized by gun violence this weekend, all because an unstable young person consumed with hate was able to easily obtain a weapon and open fire on a totally unsuspecting group of people at a garlic festival. Here in California, we have some of the strictest gun violence prevention laws in the country, but that wasn't enough to protect the people of Gilroy. This young person was able to order a gun online, walk into a gun shop in Nevada, and buy a gun that resembled a military-grade AK-47 that experts believe would have been illegal in California, and then come to our event in Gilroy and kill three people and injure more and shatter lives forever. And unfortunately, in the United States, we are only as safe as the weakest law in the closest neighboring state. This incident alone should be enough to spur national action. But we all know that the United States is plagued by an epidemic of senseless gun violence that lapdog politicians continue to ignore. Every day, 100 Americans are killed by guns. Every year, there are over 36,000 gun deaths and over 100,000 gun-related injuries. Gilroy became the 243rd community in the United States to be the victim of a mass shooting this year. This year. A mass shooting is defined as four or more people shot at one time. And in addition to Gilroy, there were three other mass shootings over the weekend. And since Gilroy, there have been at least three new mass shootings across this country where at least 15 people were killed and more than 35 were injured. We know what measures and laws to pass to put an end to this carnage. We know that states with stronger gun laws have fewer gun deaths. We need to muster the political will to do absolutely everything that is necessary and hold those accountable that don't. The gun homicide rate in the United States is 25 times higher than any other high-income country in the world. Many would have you believe that the solution to gun violence is more gun ownership. Arm the teachers, they say. The only thing to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Please. The gun, well, the gun ownership rate is two times higher than that of any other country in this world. There are 393 million guns in this country. That means there are more guns than people. If more guns meant more safety, America would be the safest country in the world. Our country has been hijacked by political extremists who use lies and propaganda to sow hate and profit from violence. The problem persists even though our elected representatives across this country all took an oath swearing they will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. No single organization has done more to orchestrate this vicious and broken system than the National Rifle Association. That is why today I'm introducing a re resolution designating the NRA a domestic terrorist organization. The United States Department of Justice defines terrorist activity in part as the use of any explosive firearm or other weapon or dangerous device with intent to endanger directly or indirectly the safety of one or more individuals or to cause substantial damage to property. And they further include any individual or member of an organization that commits an act that the actor knows or reasonably should know affords material support including communications, funds, weapons, or training to an individual that has committed or plans to commit a terrorist act. The NRA's sole purpose is to put extremely dangerous weapons in the hands of those who would harm and terrorize us. Have you seen their ads promoting gun ownership and inciting violence against fellow Americans? The NRA conspires to limit gun research restrict gun violence data sharing, and most importantly, aggressively tries to block every piece of sensible gun violence prevention legislation proposed, including when they stopped background checks at the federal level on all gun sales, even after 20 first graders were murdered with an assault rifle in their classrooms, while their six brave educators who were trying to protect them were also slaughtered. The NRA values the manufacturing and sales of mass killing machines over the innocent life of a six-year-old boy and over a community's ability to gather for a festival. 
The NRA stokes fear and promotes a culture of hate. The NRA clings to a definition of the Second Amendment that is far beyond what the framers of the Constitution intended when they authored it. Does anyone really believe the Founding Fathers who emphasized life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the very creation of this country would put the right of a deranged neo-Nazi to own an assault rifle over the life of a six-year-old boy jumping in a bouncy house at a festival? Is that what freedom looked like to them? I don't think so. Is this perverse version of freedom, the kind that permits one individual to terrorize any community at any time, the kind of freedom on which our country can be sustained, on which our constitutional promise of domestic tranquility can be sustained, on which the general welfare can be sustained? Absolutely not. The Second Amendment is not a suicide pact. In addition to declaring the NRA a domestic terrorist organization, I am also asking the Budget and Legislative Analyst Office to review the city's contracts to determine if our contractors or any of their subsidiaries have any business or sponsorship with the NRA whatsoever. We must take every step to ensure that we are not complicit in supporting this malicious organization. We must also use our considerable leverage to dislodge those who would enable the NRA, and we must encourage other jurisdictions to do the same. Finally, colleagues, I would like to close today's meeting in memory of those whose life, lives ended way too early in Gilroy this weekend because this gun violence epidemic goes on unabated. Stephen Romero, age six, Kayla Salazar, age 13, Trevor Irby, age 25. We send our prayers in honor with actions all those who were shot and injured and whose lives have been shattered forever. The rest I submit. Thank you, Supervisor Stephanie. <laughs>